Good morning guys, welcome back. So today I am going to be doing a video on the realities of tour series as someone who works because I think pretty much 99% of the women's peloton work and I'm a sure a high percentage of the men's peloton work as well. Um, so like the craziness that ensures around tour, around the tour series. So it's the day of round two up in Gala Shields. Um, some people, I know some teams have like gone and stayed over from um, Gisborough up to Gala Shields and they've not like gone home, but I had work. So <laughs> so I'm currently running around trying, <laughs> trying to get everything packed um, before I head off. Cause literally I got home like yesterday morning and I feel like I've kind of half unpacked and I'm just packing it all again. So it's a bit stressful, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> and just to add to everything, I've lost my stethoscope. I don't know where my stethoscope is gone, which is a bloody nightmare. I think I know where it is, but it, at the moment it is currently lost. <laughs> the problem is that I was so tired last night that I didn't do anything. I was like, oh, I can do it in the morning. And like, I didn't get my, didn't clean my bike, didn't pack my bag. And now <laughs> it's quarter to nine and I need to leave to go to work. And I'm running around like a headless chicken trying to make sure I've got everything. And you can look, look at these bloody dark circles under my eyes. God, they won't know if I'm a patient or a doctor. Oh dear. Oh, almost forgot my phone. That would have been a disaster. So I've just got to work. It did feel slightly ridiculous driving around the corner, but <laughs> I just thought it would save the time like, after work so I could get, get going. Um, car is packed up. Fingers crossed no one nicks the bikes while I'm at work. I've parked in quite open space. Like I always feel like people always say like park your car out of the way, but I feel like if it's in an open like where people can see, no one's gonna like smash a window in when there's people walking past, is there? Well, I hope not. <laughs> Good news guys. Found it! Woo! So it's half past twelve, I've just finished seeing my patients, just having a bite to eat before I set off for Gala Shields. Now I'm going to be 100% honest, I'm not quite sure what I've got for lunch. I've just got it out of the freezer and I'm not really sure what it is. But it's a very nice like kind of curry thing, I don't know. It tastes good though. Right, work is done, let's get going, let's go to some racing! I'm hoping it's a bit drier in Gala Shield. Ugh. So hello and welcome to the Talking Head commentary. Um, so Tour Series have allowed GoPros in races, which is super exciting. Um, I say, I say GoPro, I've got a cheap Amazon knockoff, but it works, it does the same job. So um, I was feeling surprisingly good when I was warming up for this race. My heart rate was really active, my legs felt great, um, so all the signs were good. On the start line, it was crazy as usual, like everyone was banging and barging for an extra like place. I really, I should just start at the back, like I don't know why I don't, because by the time the neutral zone comes in, I'm always just chilling at the back anyway, so you can see like now. This is the sighting lap. So I'm just relaxing at the back because everyone's so nervous. And like, luckily I'm, oh, I'm not blowing my own trumpet, but I'm strong enough that I can get round everyone once the racing starts. So there's no point trying to get caught up in a crash because that will end your race, do you know what I mean? So, um, as I said, we have this first lap behind a motorbike. Um, and it's meant to be like a sighting lap, but we've all seen the course. Like I don't really get it, but. So the course is quite wide and open. Um, and as you might be able to see, it, it was quite easy to go up the outside. So everyone was kind of going around the inside and getting stuck. And you can see here, like, I just go around the outside of everyone. Oh, well, maybe not this lap, because this was still the sighting lap. But once the um, race started, I could just go around the outside and make up loads of spaces. Um, so it was pretty fine. So that's like my top tip, really. Don't try and dive bomb on those first few corners, because... You're not going to get through. Everyone just slams their brakes on. You might as well go wide around the outside. You might get a bit more wind, but you'll probably get up. So this is the end of the sighting lap. So let me talk a bit about the course. So we've just come through the start finish. And then there was this sweeping left hander that was pretty easy to take. Like you didn't need to brake, but it went on for quite a long time. It was pretty much 180. Um, so you kind of had to pedal a bit around it, which was a bit sketchy because some people were clipping their pedals. And then there's this tighter corner where, oh my God, look, look at everyone slamming their brakes on. Go, go, go. <laughs> oh dear. So, and then it was sprint, sprint, sprint out of that corner. And then we hit this parve section, which actually wasn't too bumpy. There we go, that's the parve. If you were right in the middle of the road, it was fine. And you can see there, when you deviated a bit off to the right, it was quite bumpy. But as long as you're in the middle, and by like the middle of the race, I realized that, there was this like, bright sunshine into the front. Um, and then 
this 180 back onto the start finish straight um which had a bit of a double apex so like you kind of needed to pedal out of it um and some people were clipping their pedals which was a bit sketchy so anyway so we start going down start finish straight you can see how strung out it's getting already um so i'm just making up a few places here i was like sammy stewart yeah boy let's sit on her wheel because she's really strong she's not gonna get dropped so i was like maybe just stay on her wheel for a bit <laughs> um so yeah let me skip ahead to some more of the juicy stuff. Actually, let me just see if we go around this corner nice and wide, and I'll show you what I meant about going wide around the corner to, like, make up spaces. Yeah, so, yeah, just go wide of the Spectra Girl, and it just... Although I didn't make up any spaces there, you just don't have to slam on, and you can maintain your speed a bit, because you can see how fast we were going up this... This was a headwind to this section as well, and we're still going 42 kilometres an hour. Um... Yeah, a bit about the wind. So it seems to be a bit of a headwind on this back straight and then a tailwind on the um, start finish. So it really didn't affect the race too much. Um, as you can see, a bit about the statistics. I don't have a power meter on this bike because it's a new team bike, unfortunately. So, I mean, the bike is amazing, don't get me wrong, but there's no power data. But you can see my heart rate. Look, it's already 181 and <laughs> we're only two laps in. For, for reference, if I'm doing a threshold interval, it would normally be like 165. So I'm really going quite deep. And then you can see that we're 2.5 kilometers into the race. So let me skip ahead to a bit of the juicy bit. So we rejoin at just under 20k into the race. Um, we've just come out of the start finish straight um, and people are getting feisty you know like it is rapid so fast like my heart rate has not dropped below 180 anyway so off the front there's a little gap and there's someone from cams basso someone from pro noctis which are the two kind of major teams that are going for the team team award and a couple of other riders and i was thinking this is a dangerous move because you can see one of the Cam's Basso riders just sits up there and a gap is instantly formed. And I was like, uh-oh, SpaghettiOs, I need to get across to this. But thankfully, Sophie Holmes from Data Links is closing this gap. So I was like, I'm just going to let her close it because I know that she's pretty strong. So I was like, well, we'll just let her close. Um, so she's pushing quite hard. We're just almost about to get on. Um, and I was like, should I come round her? I was like, no, I'll just, <laughs> I'll just sit on for a bit. Um, and we get a couple of back markers going past. Like back markers were a bit of an issue on this course because it was so short. It was only one kilometer um, that you were constantly catching them. And you'll see that in a second when we get forward. So the gap's like manageable. I'm still thinking like if um, Sophie blows up, I can still jump across this, which is always like the thought that I go go through. Like, can I get across this gap on my own if I need to? Or like, do I roll the dice and stick on the wheel? So. I've stuck on her wheel, we're taking this corner fast um, at 42k an hour and she, we're sprinting to get back on. Everyone was going really fast up this back straight. Anyway, so you can see that this group ahead have slowed up and I was like, boy, I've got to go. I've got to go because it's just the perfect time. You've just caught the break. You've got to go. And I went up this left hand side, um, which was a bit protected from the wind as well and just went for it. Um, I know that my bike handling's okay, like not the best in the world, but it's all right. So I can get around these corners pretty fast. And I thought I've just got to go for it. So I was sprinting down this, <laughs> sprinting down this home straight. And I looked behind me and I was like, uh-oh, there's no one with me. And it was a big gap as well. It was probably like two or three, four seconds instantly because everyone just sat up. Um, so here I am off the front, which is really not my vibe. Like, <laughs> I'm not normally someone who goes off the front, but it was quite fun to be able to take these corners at speed on your own. Um, as you can see, you've got this sweeping left hand and then you've got the type. And then that was the thing, because I was on my own, I wasn't used to taking these corners without breaking, because normally everyone slams on. So I was like, oh, <laughs> take that right to the edge. Um, so yeah, I was just riding around off the front and I was actually away for quite a few laps. Um, I think the gap got out to about nine seconds. So I was pretty proud of that. Um, so let me just skip ahead a little bit. So I've been away for like two or three laps at this point and I'm starting to get tired. Like my heart rate is through the roof. <laughs> it was like 190 the whole time. And I started catching like lapped riders and it was just a nightmare. Like 
thankfully this doesn't have sound, but I could not even think straight. Like my legs were burning, my lungs were screaming, and my mind was just like mush. And yeah, like, normally you'd be like on your left, on your right. I was like, get out of the way. <laughs> so I am really sorry to anyone that I yelled at, but I just couldn't think of the right words. It's really not like my kind of thing to yell at people, but I was like, get out of the way, get out of the way. Because this course is so much about the fast corners that as soon as you're not taking the corner fast enough, like you can see here, I was kind of being a bit held up. I mean, it's not their fault. Like that's the rules of the race. But um, so I'm coming down to start finish straight and I've kind of lost a bit of time on both the bottom corner and the top corner. And I'm, I mean, I'm using that as an excuse, but also I was dying. And you see, I think just here, yeah, Joe Tindy comes past me. Look how far she's going. I was like, no, I'm going to get dropped. <laughs> I was like, no, please. So I was like, I need to cling on here. So I went really deep to try and like stay back on their wheel um, and not let them get away. So yeah, here's Sammy. Sammy, the one chased me down. God, you think these us Northwest girls will stick together, but she's chasing me down. Anyway, so we... Uh, from this point on, no one else got away. I kind of was just clinging to the wheel, you know, like cross-eyed, staring at the wheel in front of me, trying to hold on. Um, and my GoPro dies in about five minutes. So this is kind of like the end of the race analysis. But basically, I was just sitting on wheels, trying to stay, stay out of the wind as much as I could. And then it got to the last couple of laps. And I was planning on doing like a bit of a flyer with two laps to go. But... Um, I, I, I couldn't see the front. One of the teams <laughs> was really pushing the pace and there was no way that I was going to get away and my legs were really sore. So I was like, no, I'll just sit in. And I managed to get across the line in 11th, which I was pretty pleased with, actually. Um, so, yeah, it was a really good race. I really enjoyed it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this analysis. Well, I mean, I say analysis. Like, I don't know that. <laughs> I'm not like an expert on bike racing. But if there's anything you'd like to know, just drop it in the comment section down below. Um, and yes, yeah, so I'm just going to stop the footage here because it dies in a bit. So I wanted to see if there was any sketchy moments, but you can't really see them as well on the GoPro. I want to like stick one to the back as well. So anyway, bye. I've just got back to the hotel. Um, just, just relaxing. It's about half past 10 now to so get, try and get some sleep before going, heading back to work tomorrow. We went to Spoons after the race, um, with Team London, which was nice. Had a, well... I say a few drinks, I had a lemonade. I was going to have some food, but then I didn't really feel like it. I felt a bit sick, like it was quite an intense effort. Um, but what a sick race, like I really enjoyed it. It was really good fun. So onwards and upwards, hopefully next time I can make the attack stick <laughs> a bit longer anyway. And in the tour of hotel room, this is a pretty nice hotel room. Nice comfy bed. No snacks though. So it's five o'clock in the morning. I've just woke up. Need to get on the road to get to work for nine. <laughs> I'm leaving a bit earlier than I need to because the shower here doesn't really work. I think it's probably because I got here a bit later and you can run out of hot, hot water. So I'm going to get home and have a shower before I get to work because I haven't showered since after the race. And I feel like that is a whole nother level. <laughs> Going to work without showering would be 10 out of 10 too gross. So I have to show you something funny because when I drove in last night also it was pitch black and I was a bit tired and everything and I drove straight into a bollard now in my defence it's quite hard to see the offending article luckily my good old trusty car is basically made of plastic so it just bounced off there's no, not even any damage really <laughs> just stopped to get a chicken sandwich been craving a chicken salad sandwich and it was fucking £4.20 £4.20 Insane, but I was too hungry, too hungry to care. Okay, so it's just after nine o'clock, I've just got to work. I went home, had a shower, put some concealer on to try and hide these dark circles. Um, but yeah, what a crazy few days, or like, I can't believe I'm back at work. Um, anyway, I hope that shows you like, how mad life can be, but honestly, I wouldn't want it any other way. And by no means am I like special or different for this like crazy life like 99% of the women's peloton do this like week in week out so anyway i hope you enjoyed the video um and i hope you enjoyed the insight into tour series um if you did enjoy it give it a like give it a subscribe and i will see you in the next one see ya